Joining us now uh, on the line is uh, Congressman Jim Jordan, Republican of Ohio, a member of the House Oversight Committee that is investigating the Benghazi matter. Congressman, good morning to you. Good to have you. Good to be with you guys. All right. I want to start by what the president said about this yesterday. Uh, he came down and had some very strong things to say about all the hoopla that has developed over the talking points issue. The whole issue of this of, of talking points, frankly, throughout this process has been a sideshow. And then he added, suddenly, three days ago, uh, this gets spun up as if there's something new to the story. There's no there there. So the president says there's no there there. Congressman, you have been uh, deeply involved in looking into this matter. What do you say to the president? Uh, there's a lot of there there. And, and frankly, uh, we start from the fact that when I had a chance to visit with uh, Tyrone with his father, a few weeks back, he told me, you know, he doesn't know any more today than he knew seven months ago about the death of his son. So in the end, this is about four Americans who died, and we want to get to the truth. There is there, there. The fact that it went through 12 revisions. I told someone the other day, and I went through a couple revisions about how I was going to propose to my wife, but it was a lot less than 12. <laughs> you don't have to edit the truth. The truth is the truth. It shouldn't take 12 times to get through it and come up with these talking points that they came up with, which last Wednesday's hearing proved without a shadow of a doubt were false. What Susan Rice came out and said was patently false. Everyone sort of suspected that and kind of knew that, but it was confirmed without a doubt last Wednesday in the hearing. So well, this is serious. We're going to have more hearings. We're going to get to the bottom and find out what exactly happened and what everybody knew when they sent out these 12 different revisions and sent Susan Rice out there to mislead the American people. Well, there are two things here. First of all, he says, I said terrorism very early on. Well, that's something that the Washington Post has given four Pinocchios to this morning. Yes. And then the second thing that he said is, you know, you know, uh, this is very much mirrored by daily briefings. Uh, well, the, the terrorism thing, I mean, come on, everyone knew how they were spinning this and how they were playing this. And, oh, if he mentioned terrorism somewhere in his statement at some point, uh, that's one thing, but the, as the Washington Post rightly points out this morning, that's not what the thrust of his conversation was, certainly not what the thrust of uh, Ambassador Rice, what she said on the Sunday morning talk show. Here's the, here's the takeaway from last Wednesday's hearing. Uh, first, what we just discussed, they, they proved without a shadow of a doubt, without, without doubt that what she said was misleading on the Sunday talk show, Ambassador Rice. Second, this goes to Secretary Clinton. Cheryl Mills, who's been a part of the Clinton team for a long, long time, was part of the Clinton defense impeachment team, impeachment defense team, uh, she's the one who interceded when Congressman Chaffetz went to Libya to start an investigation and figure out what happened. She's the one who made sure, who tried to make sure that Greg Hicks had no interaction with Congressman Chaffetz without some lawyer that the department sent along. First time and only time that's ever happened where a lawyer had to be present for every single interaction, every single conversation between a member of Congress and Greg Hicks. Uh, who was uh, the, the, the chief diplomat in, in, in country. And then finally, the third thing that I think is, is probably most important from last week, even the Democrats, even the Democrats, Elijah Cummings, even the Democrats say we need additional hearings to get to the bottom of this. That's how serious this is, and that's the level that's now risen too. When the Democrats are saying we need more hearings to find out what took place, uh, you know it's serious, and, uh, and that's why we're going to get more hearings. Representative Jim Jordan's our guest. He's from Ohio, and, of course, he's a member of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. And following up on those hearings, you're, you're right. Those are some major issues coming out of the hearings last week. Uh, to me, what struck me and what was most dramatic was hearing firsthand the accounts of actually yeah. what happened there. It was such a harrowing narrative that we heard. Mm -hmm. And one thing that keeps bugging me, and I think a lot of uh, our, our listeners as well, Representative Jordan, is, uh, you know, there were calls to Secretary of State clinton at two in the morning there was outreach to uh people at the pentagon or uh, some of the military assets the special forces assets there but yeah. somehow help never came and nowhere yeah. in that chain of command in the narrative of the communications nowhere is the commander in chief do we have yeah. an answer yet on that timeline where was the president as all uh, of this was happening important important question who gave lieutenant colonel gibson the order to stand down when he was on the runway with some military personnel who were supposed to get on that plane that was going from Tripoli to Benghazi, who gave him the order, and where did it come from, and did it go ultimately to the President of the United States? And important questions we need answers to. And, and you're, you're right. Greg Hicks, the start of that hearing, and I, and I applaud Chairman Issa, who, who allowed Mr. Hicks to tell the story. Twenty Normally a witness has five minutes. 
Mr. Hicks was given as much time as he needed to tell the story. It took him 25 minutes to go through it, and it was riveting. And I, I, the, the part that grabbed me, because it's the part we can all relate to, because we've, you know, frankly, we've seen the movie. He talked about when they were smashing hard drives, they were grabbing files, they were running, uh, clearing out the embassy in Tripoli. Because remember, they thought they were next. They yeah. thought that, that, that the same kind of terrorist attack was coming to Tripoli, to their facility. And what they were doing to protect American interests and, and get rid of computers and, and do those things, smashing hard drives, smashing computers, it took you right to scenes we've seen in, you know, in, in, in various uh, yeah. Movie. But 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 again, to get, to get back to the White House, I mean, is it time for subpoenas? Is it time to actually find out and get someone in front of your committee to be able to say uh, yes. and, and hold the president accountable for his actions that night? Yes, yes, and 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 uh, you heard probably that uh, Chairman Issa announced that he wants to depose uh, 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 Admiral Mullen uh, and former Ambassador Pickering, um, who who wrote the advisory review board's report. He wants to talk to them. Why, in fact, did not they? Why, why didn't they interview uh, Secretary Clinton? Why didn't that? That seems obvious. Why, did, why didn't it take place? What? There's, there's questions there. So you start there, and then at some point, you're exactly right. Uh, we need Ambassador Rice in front of the committee. We need Secretary Clinton in front of the committee, and uh, to get to the truth. Well, she has testified on Capitol Hill, but is, is my correct? She wasn't under oath, was she? She hasn't testified in front of the oversight committee. No, not on yours, but she, she has testified, so, though, right? Oh, yeah, she testified in front of the, 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 the uh, Senate Foreign Affairs Committee, the House Foreign Affairs Committee, but not in front of the uh, oversight committee. Yeah, and you're ready for and, that, that sounds like. Okay. Yeah, that's where, that's where we want it to happen. All, All right, right, make sure she raises her hand and swears, please, Congressman. <laughs> <All right>. Okay. <laughs> uh, Congressman Jim Jordan, Republic of Ohio, sits on the oversight committee. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Take care, guys.